Hey Piggy people, Skinny Pigs one here. So today's video I want to talk to you about Velvet's update and to share with you what post-op complications we had with Velvet, what I noticed and what was wrong and all of that. So if you guys don't know, Reese here and Velvet both went to get spayed. Reese just got to rejoin the herd, but Velvet had complications so she's about a week behind for healing. Up in the iCards I'll leave videos that have to do with talking about spaying and a video where I talked about all the stress I was having and a video where Reese rejoined the herd. So right now Velvet is off the side of the herd. It's a little 1 by 3 area. She is sleeping in her tunnel so we can't even see her so we'll just focus on these guys at the moment. So they both got their surgery. It was a Tuesday. Uh, Reese, her incision right from the start was very sealed up so the vet does the ones that are under the skin so you can't even see them. Um, hers was really sealed. I think she had skin glue on it. Totally sealed shut. Velvet's was a little more open. There's a couple little tiny gaps. Which are normal but hers was just a touch more open and the first night when I was looking after her it was a little bit weepy so when I would take her out there would just be a tiniest amount of just like a clear maybe touch pink of fluid so the next day which was the Wednesday same thing it was still open and by the end of the day Wednesday Wherever she was laying, once she got up, she was leaving spots of like pinkish fluid that you could see had soaked into the fleece. So I was more concerned about that. So I put her in an even smaller section to really restrict her movement. Because I felt like her incision really needed to start sealing up, so maybe she was moving around a bit too much. So then the next morning, which is Thursday, um, when I checked on her, her incision was sealed, which great, but she had a big puffy area, the whole line of her incision. So I was absolutely terrified when I saw that. I've never experienced that before. So I sent a picture to the vet for them to check and to be like, is this normal? What's going on? So my vet looked at it and she said that that is a seroma. So a seroma can happen after surgery. It's a collection of fluid just under their skin. So it's between like her muscle and then her skin on top. She said to just keep an eye on it, but they usually get reabsorbed back into the body one to two weeks later. So that was fine. Like it was creepy seeing it, but I was like, okay, we're not to worry. So I had chose to start her on antibiotics the previous day, just because since her incision was a bit open, it made me nervous and. It depends where you go. Some vets do antibiotics automatically, preventatively. Some only give them if there is an issue. So anyway, that was my choice. I started it just because I was nervous. So then Friday comes along and now the fluid line is different. So I was told not to panic if more fluid collected that that was possible. So she had more fluid. So again, I'm trying to remain calm. And then the next morning, she has more fluid. And so now the fluid is starting to not be up by her incision line, but is actually going down lower in her abdomen, kind of closer to where her nipples and stuff are. I'll see if I can insert pictures for this as well. 
So I was getting a little bit more concerned. Like it still felt squishy. She was still eating, pooping, drinking, acting normal. So I was just carrying on. And finally, midweek, the following week, so we just got to our one week mark. I was just like, okay, this just doesn't feel right to me. Like I can't stop panicking that this just does not seem right. So then we had her rechecked and the vet thought that maybe she had herniated after feeling her abdomen. So what that means is somehow the sutures have ruptured and fat or worst case like intestines or whatever the heck can be poking through her internal incisions. So that was absolutely terrifying to hear and I bawled for a few minutes because I was like what have I done I chose to do this to her and now she's having a problem so the only solution was for her to go back into surgery so to tell you that that sucked would be an understatement I felt so bad for her that she had to go back to surgery and I was scared all over again so she went back into surgery and instead of her being herniated, what they found was all her muscle tissue, basic terms, looked really angry and that's where there was all fluid around it and where her incision was, was all angry looking. So it looked like either she had a rare reaction to her sutures or when she got the seroma, there could have been some bacteria in there that started in an infection. So the vet cleaned her all out, so it took all the fluid out, any nasty tissues, and she decided to change all the sutures to a different kind. So I guess there's two different kinds, so she switched her to the other kind, and then she got sealed back up. So I felt bad for her because her outer incision now was even bigger because they needed more room to clean out all the bad stuff so then I was told that if she fills back up with fluid after this she has to come right back so the morning after her surgery she had some swelling it was really hard to look at because I kept thinking it was going to be fluid again um, but my vet said you know, after all the stuff she's been through, you're going to expect there to be swelling. So luckily, it only took a couple days for me to be able to tell that the swelling was going down so that things were moving in the right direction. And we just came back, as I said, from a recheck. And when we were going for the recheck, like... All the swelling has disappeared. Her incision stayed sealed shut the entire time. It was never weepy or anything or looking irritated. So I was feeling confident going to the vet this time. But it was so nice to hear her say that yes, everything is sealed and that her, her internal incision line is perfect. So she says that we can slowly start giving her a bit more room to move and get her back to the herd soon enough so that's really exciting um, oh my goodness was it an emo emotional roller coaster I've never been so stressed out and I mentioned in the other video before that just flipping her over to look at her incision the dread was so real and I felt at one point when she just kept getting more fluid and it just didn't look right I felt like we were never going to get a recovery that we weren't going to get anywhere. I don't know if that makes sense, but it just felt like every day was a disappointment. So once finally the second time around and the swelling slowly started to get smaller and smaller, my hope was coming back. So throughout the entire thing, something that really stayed positive was Velvet always was eating and drinking and moving around and acting normal. 
So I'm really glad that I chose to start her on antibiotics when I did because maybe that helped the infection from not getting so bad. And I just want to make it clear that post-op infections are something that you risk happening. It's one of the risks that, one of the complications that can happen. And I read a lot online that seromas make it even more likely for post-op infection since they're collecting fluid and it's all just sitting there. So, yeah, that's what happened. Um, I am so thankful that she is doing well. And it was just so awesome of how tough she is. Like, I can't even believe what a tough pig she is to go through two surgeries and to still act normal for eating, drinking, and moving around. So what I did for her every morning and night is when I had to check her incisions. So I would take her out, check her incision, give her her meds, and hand feed her some Sherwood recovery poo. poo? I just both said recovery poo. Recovery food. And then I would put her back in her cage. So morning and night before I put her back in the cage, I cleaned her cage to brand new liners, brand new pads, so that everything was super tidy and fresh. Uh, she was getting v extra vitamin C, lots of veggies, tons of hay. Oh, there's my baby girl. She's just peeking out now. I'm just not, I don't want to startle her. So, she is a tough pig and, oh, she's all stretched. Tough, tough pig and we've kind of bonded. Uh, before when she was out on my lap, she would never dare have anything to eat. So we're at the point where she can be on my lap and she's comfortable to lay down while I pet her and have a snack. Is she still nervous when I go to reach in the cage? Yes. Um, what I did for her for transferring is I would get her to go in her foam tunnel that you guys can see here. And I would lift up the entire tunnel with her in it. And then I would set the tunnel on the floor in front of a lap pad and have the wood log tunnels on top of this pad and she would just transfer herself from her foam tunnel to under the wood logs and then I would take the wood logs off and lift up the pad with her and put her on my lap. So I was absolutely freaked out that I did not want to be picking her up normal and doing any damage to her stomach. So that was our transfer method and it worked amazing. So I'm really thankful that she was so good for going in and out of tunnels so that I did not have to try to pick her up in her cage and all of that stuff. So I will um, share with you guys once she gets to go back with the herd. I cannot wait and I don't anticipate any issues. She was the bottom pig of the herd so I don't see her disrupting anything. And when Reese came back, Reese is... Um, a step above Raisin and Raisin didn't have any reaction so I don't anticipate there being any issue. So anyway, thanks for listening guys and I'll see you all later. Bye! If you like watching guinea pig videos, learning how to care for us, seeing product hauls or reviews, or really anything else guinea pig, please subscribe and make sure you hit that notification bell so you never miss a video. Down below I've left two more videos for you to pick from, so keep on watching!